Hello and welcome. This video is about super, super trees and would be of interest to anybody who's in the timber or biofuels, uh, wood pellets, paper, or environmental re remediation that uses woody species to help clean the environment. My name is Jim Barlow. <clears throat> I'm an agronomist. This is my picture. And I am holding two crosscuts here of polonia logs. And these crosscuts are the same age. This is a crosscut of a four-year-old hybrid, elite hybrid, that would be the normal diameter for this kind of a hybrid. And this is the crosscut of what is called the polyploid clone of this elite. So this video is about polyploidy in trees. is now a practical way to get trees to grow dramatically faster and therefore be much more valuable in industry. Polyploidy has been known to plant uh, breeders for many, many decades, but the ability to create a stable polyploid tree where the polyploid condition is stable in that tree has eluded scientists until recently. The Polygenomics Company has established a process for how to create a stable polyploid tree, and this is now a, a game-changing technology for anybody in, in dealing with woody plants. Polyploidy means that there is a way to cause a tree to synthesize a duplicate set of its own chromosomes in every cell of, the, of that tree. It's done in the laboratory in a tissue culture sort of an environment. We'll take some tissue of the, of the starting hybrid clone and induce this polyploidy. And the big invention is how to stabilize this polyploid condition so it doesn't revert. When you get a polyploid uh, clone, it's a more robust plant. It's bigger. And I'll show you why. So this is a representative leaf of the elite hybrid polonia. And this is the correct size for what you would expect. And this more robust leaf is the leaf of the polyploid version of this elite hybrid. So not only do we have double the photosynthetic area, but the same number of leaves are going to be twice as big, and that alone will um, cause a lot more fixation of carbon. But in polyploidy, something else happens, which is that in photosynthesis, more carbon dioxide is captured, and photosynthesis is 50% more efficient. So imagine 50% more efficient photosynthesis from a leaf that is twice as big, and that explains how we get this kind of, of growth. So this is the elite hybrid polonia. This is 15 weeks of growth from when it was coppiced here at the stump, and this is the regrowth sprout in 15 weeks. And that's very good for this elite hybrid, and that represents this leaf in the middle. So when you take this, this mother clone and you make it polyploid and you plant it right next to it at the same time, this is the difference. This is a stunning difference in the amount of of growth and biomass accumulation in the same 15 weeks. And the reason this is happening is that here are these leaves that are twice the size, and inside these leaves, photosynthesis is twice as efficient, or I'm sorry, 50% more efficient. And so over time, the tree is just fixing so much more carbon dioxide that we get this differential in biomass accumulation in the tree. The company Polygenomics has been doing this for over a decade. This is the first set of trees they grew for four years, a uh, number of years ago. And then they planted another set out, and they've harvested these just a couple years ago. And these trees that we're looking at here are in the ground now. This is the third rotation, and this picture was taken recently. So what we're doing when we polyploid a tree is we start with the best tree we can get, not just normal stock, but let's start with hybrid stock. That's the elite hybrids. In the laboratory, we are essentially supercharging those hybrids, and we're giving them the ability to suck in a lot more atmospheric gases and process those gases and fix them into wood or sugars or oils. And so we get this extra growth by how the plant is just sucking in and fixing much more carbon, carbon dioxide. So this is a missing piece to the profit puzzle for timber companies, uh, pellet companies, wood, uh, paper pulp, biomass to electricity, uh, wood uh, forest products companies, and also for liquid biofuels that use feedstocks that come from plant-derived oils or sugars or cellulose. 
So imagine having twice the feedstock and half the waiting time from planting and having twice the feedstock per acre um, as your source of your feedstock. And the economics of that are game changing. This science was independently verified by Dr. Andrew Lowe and his team at the University of Queensland in Australia. Uh, Dr. Lowe has impeccable academic credentials. This is one of his books, Ecological Genetics, by Dr. Andrew Lowe and his other authors. And so this, um, this, this process has been independently verified. The results of the verification were published scientifically. And this technology is coming at a good time. The ability to have super, super trees can help us in so many ways as this planet uh, is getting into trouble. This is a graph from limits to growth that is studying trends. It's looking at non-renewable resources being mined out of the crust of the earth, population going up, um, services per capita, food per capita. And what this is saying is that in about 20 30 or so, 2020, we're going to, the party is going to be over. We're going to have some downtrends that are going to be very distressing and, it's, and um, a lot of people are going to get hurt. Um, and there's going to be a huge opportunity here for solutions, ways to have renewable energy and other kinds of, of uh, solutions to these trends as standards of living start to decline. We're going to have that problem in the context of a drying planet. This is a map from 20 different atmospheric departments at 20 different universities compiled. And it's predicting that we're going to have much more probability of drought in different countries, different belts around the planet. So just when we need rain to help us with our food production and our forest and wood products production, it's going to get drier. We already have a lot of salted soils. A lot of our lands are salting up, and that trend is just going to continue at a time when we need good arable soils. A lot of our soils are going to become salted. And so another benefit, another advantage that, that the polyploid, polyploid process allows is that when the lab, when polygenomics is in the tissue working to duplicate or to cause the, the duplicate set of chromosomes, they can also activate latent genes in the genome of that plant and they can produce for the client what are called adaptive polyploids. Polyploids that can tolerate salty soils or live in more arid conditions or that can live in soils around mines that have a lot of toxic uh, heavy metals and things in them. So this is hoop pine. This is the normal hybrid in a very salty alkaline uh, potting mix and irrigation water and this is the adapted polyploid that can thrive in these saline conditions that stunt the original mother plant. So imagine being able to take saline soils like this and be able to plant out a polyploid tree that is adapted to this kind of salinity and will just ignore the salinity and grow normally as a polyploid grows. So that's the opportunity. At Polygenomics, you can get excellent services. There's an expert forester at Polygenomics, Dr. Robert Thistlethwaite, is a career forester who can help you design your, your uh, forester timber projects. And then there's another, um, another point that we should make here, which is that as good as polyploids are, they are heavy feeders. To grow that fast, they're heavy feeders. And so soil fertility is still important. Now you can have an adapted polyploid growing well in a salty condition where the original mother clone can't tolerate the salt. So it can tolerate the, the salts, but it's still going to have to have a flow of nutrients and a fertility program that allows it to grow to its full potential. Polyploid trees still need good agronomy. So you should have a good agronomist on your team. And that's 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 who I am. That's what I am. So let me introduce myself, Jim Barlow, as an expert agronomist, <clears throat> expert in, in sustainable agriculture and the use of soil microbiology to help with plant growth. I went down to polygenomics in 2008 to do my own due diligence visit, and I met Dr. I'm sorry, I met uh, Malcolm Lamont, who is the inventor of this technology, and I had a chance to talk and visit with Dr. Andrew Lowe after he had done his independent verification. The 
Techniques of sustainable agriculture and agronomy that I use are all university-based uh, techniques and practices. I don't do anything fringe. And the, pro the uh, techniques and methods I use uh, work in all different kinds of climates. They'll work in tropical zones, temperate zones, or arid zones. Basically what I do as an agronomist is to work with uh, client soils to get a better topsoil that is a better rooting zone and has more nutrient transfer to the plant and to improve soils over time rather than to see them be degraded or depleted. So I use practices and principles that create generally more humus, that stimulate bigger and better root systems, that help infiltration of water and air, and generally um, drive higher and better yields through those kinds of better rooting environment. Here I am in Cambodia where I helped establish the first commercial strawberry farm in Cambodia. Uh, we were producing very high quality fruit that was being used by the catering company that was supplying first class meals to Thai Airlines. And here we are doing a 20 minute video shoot for a video magazine that was on Cambodian television. I do a lot of teaching. Here I am teaching uh, farmers and other consultants in the United States. Um, I am a master consultant and a master agronomist. This is a letter from the U.S. Department of Commerce that is endorsing me to the Minister of Agriculture in Kurdistan in northern Iraq. And I, <clears throat> on that letter, I went to Kurdistan and I did a training for the all the department heads at the Ministry of Agriculture in Kurdistan. So there's um, fruits and vegetables and forestry, um, fisheries, animal science, pastures, grains, all the different departments heads were here and we did a training. The programs that I do, the methods that I do, they work for generally all crops, just general principles that are adapted to the type of crop and type of location. Here um, in Cambodia I was able to quadruple the yield of rice that the normal peasants get. We can also improve grains and pretty much all other crops. And we do this, or I do this, by the numbers. I use uh, normal uh, soil analysis, and where I look at the um, at the amount of nutrients in soils to, to see which are deficient or which are excessive, and from these I know how to read these and how to design fertilizer programs for specific fertilizers and amendments. In addition to getting the chemistry of the soil correct, I'm expert in applied soil microbiology as a way to boost crop growth and yield in addition to what you do with fertilizers. Soil microbiology has emerged as a major next thing farmers and foresters can do to boost up their yields beyond their fertilizer programs. I won't go into it here, but microbes do many, many things in and around roots that help plants grow faster, better. And if you have a good teeming ecosystem of many types of good beneficial microbes in soils that are functioning correctly, you'll have a better plant and a better yield. So here's a root zone, and all these beneficial microbes and good guys and bad guys are all in this zone. So we'll have fungi and bacteria living here, and then we'll have predators that eat these, and we'll have super predators that eat the basic predators, and all of that law of the jungle kind of ecosystem is in this habitat of the root zone. When this is right, and when these microbe communities are teeming, that's when we get the boost in plant growth. The question is, how do you create those conditions and how do you get those blooms of microbes. And so there are a number of what I call biological products now on the market that are not fertilizers and not chemicals. They are things used at a quart per acre or a gallon per acre that stimulate blooms of beneficial microbes and that create the, the kind of good ecosystem that we want that help plants to grow. I did research on one of these formulas. We took it to the University of Wyoming Research and Extension Center in 2010. We put it out in edible beans and where we put the biological product with the identical fertilizer program, we produced 400 more pounds of edible beans per acre with a quart of a biological product added in the row at planting. And so these biological products are powerful and they can be used in trees with equal kind of result. These are potatoes. This is a field that is loaded with a disease called verticillium. We used a biological product here which suppressed by a biological means 
the disease and so we got a clean field where we used the, pro the uh, product and we didn't have to use any chemical fungicides. This is a biological suppression of a bad uh, root disease infestation done with a modern biological product. In grapes, these are wine grapes in California that had a very bad root disease problem. The vines had basically lost their, their roots. And so this was the caliper of the cane from the previous year. We came in here with a good biological product program. We caused new roots to grow and flourish. And with that new root system, the vine was able to regrow its canopy with normal nice canes again. And we're able to do that without any pesticides, just with these biological products in a woody plant. So we had bad roots that were diseased and, and not a full root system. And at the end of our program, we had a big woolly root system, and that's what supported the renewed canopy. This work was noticed, and so I got publicity in Grape Grower magazine, and I was invited to contribute articles in a column to that magazine. So this uh, program, these techniques are powerful in tree crops, and that's good. So here I was in Africa working in woody tree crops, and this is Detrofa responding to the biofuels um, industry in 2006, 2007, 2008. And the problem we had was that the genetics of Detrofa around the world just weren't yet ready for real commercialization. This was like wild type Detrofa that uh, just didn't have the benefit of any breeding at that time. So these would be the seeds of that wild type Detrofa. And here are 20 seeds that are air dried. And these 20 seeds weigh 8.6 grams. When this Detrofa is made polyploid, and you harvest the seeds of the polyploid version of Detrofa without any breeding, without getting to hybrid varieties first, just going straight from the wild type to a polyploid of that. The same 20 seeds now weigh 20 grams, from 8.6 to 20 grams of seed from the polyploid differential. So this would be a, an example of a not, a, not even a hybrid, this would be like a Model A of just a standard wild type plant that didn't have any breeding yet. And we took that and we turbocharged it and made it a polyploid. So there is now on the planet a polyploid line of, of, of um, Jotropha that can go back into all these places where Jotropha failed and deliver at least twice the yields built into the plant. This is a game changer for the biodiesel industry. Now, what would happen if you took the best of the polyploid technology and added to that the talent of a very good forester, Dr. Bob Thistlethwaite at uh, Polygenomics, have the support of the inventor of the technology that understands how to tune the plants that you bring, your elite hybrids that you bring to have them be made polyploid, a good agronomist that can help you with your soils and the nutrient flow into the plant so that the heavy feeders have the fertility they need to not be slowed down in their growth. And in the background, the scientist who understands genetics and did the independent review. If you had this kind of a combination of the polyploidy with the agronomy and the forestry, you'll have an edge in profit drivers that will be far above just hybrid stock, which is industry standard at the time. Now, Dr. Thistlethwaite and I have a lot of international experience, so we're, we're, we're familiar with soils and climate uh, zones in other countries. And so for whatever type of biofuels or timber industry that you may be involved in, we're using woody plants, we would be able to help supply a polyploid version of your best stuff, help, uh, help with site selection and understand how to grow that in the soils and climate where you have your plantations or where you source your biofuels. I want to thank you very much for listening to this presentation. And uh, again, my name is Jim Barlow. I'm a master agronomist, and I have my own small company, Soil Web. You can see my email there and my website. So if you're interested in this kind of work with polyploidy, please contact me, and I'll introduce you to the people at Polygenomics and assist you with your agronomy. Thank you.